No free windows this time. The Guardians' winning streak in 2024 ends at nine games. It couldn't match the 14-game or the 22-game winning streak. Still, it was a fun nine-game stretch. We will talk about the Guardians' loss to the Rockies that ended it all, but we'll look back at the nine-game winning streak with the Guardians didn't do well, what they didn't do well, and why it's more impressive that the Guardians didn't do some things during that winning streak or more who didn't do what. We'll talk about that on today's Lockdown Guardians. You are Locked On Guardians, your daily podcast on the Cleveland Guardians, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello, everyone. Today's episode is brought to you by Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use the code Locked On MLB for twenty dollars off your first purchase. Terms apply. Um, so, I guess I'm not allowed to talk because all I do is negativity. Listen, the one nine out of ten. Um, uh, we're supposed to be upset. They did that with arguably the two guys who most stirred the drink for this team offensively for the first month and a half, being no part of it for the most part. Um, Jose is back being Jose bullpen is still mostly bulletproof. I don't know. Like if you're not enjoying this team, like I thought they were going to come back in the ninth. I still I thought they're going to come I back. I, I thought terrible call of the ninth, but I thought they're going to come back. Yeah, the Rockies bullpen is, is the worst in the league, so I for sure thought they were going to come back. They had opportunities. They set themselves up to even to, to come back in that game and make it a 10-game winning streak. They did, and um, even though they could have won that game with a better decision on pitching earlier in the game, uh, it's fine. You know, they any, any winning streak, there are probably like, I don't know, three or four moments a game where if things go in a different direction, if a ball hits a pebble or – you know, the wind is blowing in a certain direction. You lose that game, right? That's that's how you extend winning streaks. Sometimes it takes luck. Like, you have to play a good ball every day. But sometimes, like I said, it depends on which way the wind is blowing or um, if a guy is not feeling the, be- the best today or, you know, just ends up slipping on the mound or something, then you might put together a streak like that. So generally how winning streaks get put together. Can I also throw out – I'm not going to name any names here. I have to, I have to throw it back to a, a uh, Cleveland sports – personality we'll call him um if you can recall this back in 2016 this person said well if you take out the 14 game winning streak this team is really not that good that was a uh i don't know if you remember who that is you can comment below i don't you think you're i right. don't uh, yeah well i'll share it off air i'm not going to do it on air but you know if you take this ten, if you take this nine game winning streak away the guardians are a 500 team so they're not really that good obviously right that's that's the takeaway here right this is obviously no, not a good team because they needed a nine-game winning streak to stay over 500. They took care of business. Listen, the Angels are yeah. t- are bad, and they took care of the Angels. You know, they what we went off the air last. They hadn't had that series, and they went and they they took care of business, and they kept doing it. And yeah, I, I don't know if people remember back to last year, but it was we, we they they face um, Colorado in May every year, and I know this because you know I'm excited to hear Jack Corrigan. I listened to the. It was the April Rocky. last year, wasn't it? Wasn't it April was, last year? Wasn't April? It was. It was June. Tanner made his that. debut against the Rockies. And I was think it? That was well, April. either way, they they did they get swept by the Rockies a year ago, or they, it, like the it Rockies good. were. It was like two. Yeah, or three. It was the only game they won was Tanner's start. Yeah, the only game they won was so, Tanner's first. You know, first start. like they they do have some bad luck against the Rockies, weirdly, but like at the same time, this is a game where there were opportunities. That double play in the second inning was a killer. Um, here's my general view. And I, I got into a few arguments online with Xavier Curry. The third inning was not great. Like I was already on pins and needles, like hoping he could be a fly in five. So after he had the walk and the single, I would have had someone throwing, you know, even if it's a Vila, just have someone throwing. And, and if you disagree with me, I think the one thing we can all agree on is like, go out and do visits, you know, have him like pitch around a guy, take his time as much as you can and make sure he's not there to face Blackman. Uh, because that was like, that is where that, I mean, that, that was the turning point uh, of, of this game. And like I said, it was great that they fought back, you know, it really should have been a one run loss um, because that terrible strikeout call. But, you know, it, again, it, it's one loss. <laughs> they won the previous nine. They weren't going to win them all. Um, right. Exactly. You know, it's, I these things the happen. I want to get into the Rockies game simply a little bit later, but let's, let's look back at the nine game winning streak because I think, there were a lot of positive things, obviously, when you win nine games in a row, things are generally positive. But, you know, we said it, it's generally things that didn't happen during the winning streak that are most impressive. Like, let's, let's just talk about Jose real quick. So, you know, 
April was not a great month for Jose Ramirez. I shouldn't say not great. It was it was below it Jose was, Ramirez. It was standards. not great for Jose. Like yes, it wasn't bad, but it was not great okay. for Jose. No, but Jose during this winning streak, obviously, you know, started to to look at look things up a little bit. He, you know, he looks like Jose Ramirez. I mean, I know there's been stats posted everywhere about what he's done during the winning streak, but um, during that winning streak, I'm sorry, just the month of May in general, ten home runs. He's sitting, you know, not including Monday stats, which he also did well because he had two doubles in that game, but 278, 353, 656, 10 homers. I've got the updated. Rubies. So he's oh, up yeah. 284, 355, 663. Yeah, just an incredible incredible yeah. month of May. And if you if you drill down during the winning streak, just it's it gets even better. I mean, that's just it's it's um six six of those home runs come during the winning streak. Not during those nine games, two two sixty WRC plus, only matched by you know the the ridiculous um, phenomenon that is David Fry, who had a three forty three WRC plus playing in seven of of those nine games, and that was really it. Honestly, if you look at during the winning streak, was uh, Jose was Jose, David Fry was magical, uh, Andre Semenes hit the ball well, a little bit BABIP inflated, like he uh, didn't walk a lot. He hit three fourteen on three forty six BABIP. Tyler Freeman hit the ball well, 294, got on base a ton because of walks, which is great. And then, you know, you got Kyle Manzardo, who started to look a little more comfortable, which we'll talk about later, too. And after that, offensively, it was just a bunch of random moments that worked out well for you. Like, that was it, offensively. During this nine-game stretch, you know, they managed to score 11 runs and then 10 runs against the Angels on Friday because of the, the three home runs. But they didn't really do anything offensively that they haven't been doing all year, like, the, the, the Twins win was a 3-2 nail-biter, right? You had a 5-2 walk-off win on a game that you tried to give away. Um, you had to kind of scratch and claw against the Mets offensively. And then um, a couple of one-run games against the Angels. Like, nothing they were doing was just not out of the ordinary. In fact, I would argue that offensively they were less impressive during this winning streak, if anything, um, you know, outside of Jose just really carrying the load and David Fry. So, you know, you didn't have Stephen Kwan during this nine-game stretch. Josh Naylor, his month of May has been rough. Off. Um, Bo Naylor's entire year has been awful. Like you literally had a four 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 man offense this entire nine-game winning streak. Um, the starting pitching was better. The bullpen was really good as, as always. Like they didn't do anything crazy during this winning streak to pull it off, which is why we keep saying like you know, we don't know how this year is going to end. We don't know how it's going to come out. I know people are saying like, what was it? The 36 wins and 53 games only has only been done in the years. They've made the world series yeah. 97. Cause they obviously had a bad year to start that year, but you know, we don't know how this, this season is going to end up, but again, nothing they're doing is like earth shatteringly crazy where you're like, well, they're not going to keep this up. Like they're, they're just winning games playing normal. That's why we think like there could be a better version of this team in the future. Cause I don't expect Josh Naylor to be this bad the rest of the year. I don't expect Bo Naylor to be this bad the rest of the year. And you're going to get Stephen Kwan back soon. You think at some point you're going to upgrade some spot in the lineup. Maybe like you've gotten zero production from shortstop. You've gotten very little production from the outfield outside of Kwan and, and, you know, Freeman's had his stretches. Brennan's had his stretches. Like they're winning games without really having to, just go on crazy heaters with guys like they are not doing anything they have that that's you know out of their world late to win games other than i think the bullpen continues to to give them a lot of uh leverage in terms of how they can win games because that they're like god what was the it was i think against the angels or i said after this if they're up after the sixth inning they're like 27 and one or 26 and it's like the bull, the bullpen is the weapon. That's and, and that's the one thing where you can be like, yes, this is a little bit unsustainable because the bullpen it's been like having five um, all star closers. It, it's been really really good, and I think everyone will stay good. But I don't think maybe the level it's at. And yeah, mm. Josh Naylor, it's you know it. You look at him right now through the month. He's hitting one sixty five in May with a two fifty eight on base, a three eighty eight slug. Um, you know, Will, you and I had the discussion with Will Brennan that he's probably a fourth outfielder. Like it's 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 probably starting to get to that point. And, and even like Manzardo for his ups and downs, he's at a 200, 245, 320. So you're hoping for more there. But ben, beneath Manzardo is Brokio and Naylor and Rod, Rodriguez. It's too small of a sample, but Arias and Florio and um, 
yeah, at some point you're hoping that one of these young guys is going to, I don't know, catch a heater, but like step up and stay up. Find their, find a level. Yeah. yeah, You know, the Naylor is going to, you know, you and I were talking about Bo Naylor is the third most important bat on this team in the off season. And instead he has been their worst everyday player. And I don't know if there's a distinct answer. Like, yeah, it's great. He had the two singles today, but if he doesn't hit into a, if he strikes out instead of hanging into a double play, maybe they win this game too. Because I mean, that was that, that short cut in inning where, with you know, they, they had a pitcher who was just giving them walks. So it's, there's a lot going on, but the nice thing is, you know, they've done all of this with struggles. You know, it's mm-hmm. the only guys above league average in the month of May are Freeman Ramirez and Fry, and they've won games. And then that is what gives you faith that they're going to be able to uh, to continue to win games. So, yeah, it's it's not just luck. It's Right, it's not just luck. I mean, there's a degree of luck involved anytime you win nine in a row. Yes. But, like, even if you don't win nine in a row, they've played well enough where you could sit here and say, well, they probably could have gone six and three, or they probably could have gone seven and two. That's still pretty good. Anytime you put that kind of winning streak together, there's definitely a degree of, like, random sequencing that goes your way and a little bit of luck and that's fine sometimes that's going to happen and we're not sitting here saying this team's going to go on another nine game winning streak or they're going to go on 12 or they're going to win 15 and get everybody three windows again again common common if you remember that it wasn't that long ago even though it has been a couple years now but yeah i think there's still things this team can get better at. and there's actually one thing during the stretch that they did very well that i think is the most outside of the fact that you didn't get any production from the nailers and Quan has been out during this winning streak there's one thing I think the Guardians did really well that I think bodes well for them the rest of the year that they did during the swing streak. So we'll talk about that coming up next, as well as the Colorado game a little more. And we'll talk about this team getting a little bit healthier, hopefully leading to them getting a little bit better as well. So stick around for that. Our first sponsor, listen, I've told the story before. We have a current deal with Stitch Fix where you can get $20 off what you order from from Stitch Fix. And why is this important? Uh, because my wife loves Stitch Fix so much, she wouldn't make a new account to take advantage of the $20 off. She refused to give up the fact that she's worked with a stylist. And as she put it, it's like, we have two kids. We both have very busy jobs. I'm down here recording. We're lucky if we get about 30 minutes to chat a day, it feels like sometimes. With that limited time, you can get a whole new wardrobe and they get to know you. And it's a product that the Ellis family, Ellis Milton family wholeheartedly um you know, supports. Uh, My wife is a huge, huge fan. So if you want to, you know, get a new wardrobe, if you want to get something that is stylish and good, and you can do it very easily, check out Stitch Fix for yourself. It's style that makes you feel as good as you look. Get started today at stitchfix.com slash MLB and get $20 off your first fix. Again, my wife wouldn't give up her count to save 20 bucks. That's stitchfix.com slash MLB for $20 off. Stitchfix.com slash MLB must redeem within seven days of sign up. Make sure you are tuning into game two of the 2007 should have been World Series against the Rockies at 840 on your Sirius XM app. No matter what you're doing, just search Guardians on your Sirius XM app. Very easy to find. All right, Jeff, the one thing the Guardians, this is one thing we've been screaming about for months, right, is uh, what the Guardians have not been able to do uh, most of the season. And if you go back the last two seasons, they haven't really done it a lot. And that is patience. The Guardians... You know, they took three walks against Anthony Molina, and Anthony Molina is not great. So, but, you know, we've seen times where they face pitchers that weren't throwing strikes and they've expanded the zone, right? Continually frustrating. So, during this nine game stretch, this winning streak, the Guardians had a 9% walk rate. That was good for sixth in Major League Baseball during that time. Uh, that's, that's fantastic because coming into the year or coming into the series, they were below 7%. Um, in the month of April alone, their walk rate, I'm sorry, well, I guess it's definitely March and April, whatever. Um, they were at 7.7%. So now, as a team, they are up to 82 for the season, which puts them at 21st. In the month of April, that was 25th. So they've jumped four spots just from this winning streak alone. And if you just look at the month of May for how they've done in this, in this uh, stint, 8.8% walk rate, not including... Um, Monday's really good stretch. So that's going to go up even more. That's seventh. They're finally starting to see some more pitches. And you know, that's the one thing Brian Rocchio has done well for the most part. He's got a good walk rate. Everything else is pretty awful. Um, 
Josh Naylor is barely walking this year. Um, he was at first. Bo Naylor's walk rate has cratered. Florio was giving you some walks early on. Jose, Jose doesn't really walk a ton. He walks about average anymore, which is which is which is fine. Freeman's gotten better walking. Rodriguez, you know, is patient, but like borderline passive. Fry, if anybody is the best walk guy here, it's David Fry. That's the guy to me that is like really transformed this offense. Is you know, he gets hit by pitches too. He got hit by one on Monday, but he he doesn't chase out of the zone. Like if you look at his Savant page, there are some good things. There are some things that are okay. His chase rate is incredible. That guy does not chase out of the zone very often. Um, so you got Rocchio and, and Jose's a little okay. Fry's good. Uh, Freeman has gotten really a lot better in that leadoff spot. If this team could continue to again be league average power wise, right? Just be middle of the pack with power, home runs, doubles, whatever it is, and be league average at drawing walks, not just as long as they're not in the bottom five percent like they were a year ago. This offense can be very, very effective. So I hope this is something they can they can maintain. And I know they didn't face the world's greatest pitching during this stretch, but it doesn't really matter because if you're, you know, we talk all the time about this offense, about how they're not patient and they, they're very swing happy. A lot of them don't see a lot. They do. They will see pitches, but they, they tend not to not walk. That can be exposed by bad pitching just because it's an approach. It's hard to change that. So um, I'm very encouraged by that as much as I'm encouraged by the fact they're able to win nine games without a whole lot of production from a couple of guys that were great in April. Yeah. We talked about that, that that walk rate was something that they needed badly to do. That was one of those things that um, walks are a great way to punish a team. It's like in the month of May, top two guys, Fry and Rokio both have 12, you know, at the end of the day today, Jose at 11, Naylor at 10, um, you know, the only ones who really aren't Gabby at one and Bo Naylor at two. And that's, that's again, the Bo Naylor thing. Yeah. The Bo Naylor is, I mean, this is, I don't know what you do with them. Um, I, there isn't an easy answer. Cause like, here's the thing. If it's an issue with velocity, you have to leave them up, but I don't think it's an issue with velocity. I think, you know, we can talk about some, it's like right now, neither Naylor brother can hit a changeup. So teams are just throwing change up as much as they can. That's what and, that's what Bo rolled over after that double play. Yeah, yeah. and it, it's one of those situations where you can face decent change change ups in AAA um, because again, it's velocity is what goes up. You know, secondary offering guys with good secondary offerings with mediocre fastballs. That's that's the quad A life. So, mm-hmm. you know, we're definitely hitting a point where I, I mean, his framing is fantastic, but man, I mean, Bo is he's. He, He's below Austin Hedges in terms of like most stats in the month of May. He has a lower, you know, almost everything is lower for him. Um, Batting average is higher, but on base is lower. Slugging percentage is lower. OPS is lower. When Austin Hedges is outperforming you offensively, that's just such a alarm bell. I mean, it's only 20 plate appearances for Hedges. I assume if you gave him the 56 that Naylor has, they'd probably be if just as bad, if not worse. So it's a small sample, but I mean, he's, it's it's not like it's great. It's a one sixty seven, two fifty, three thirty three. I mean, that's that's a pretty typical hedges line he has now. It is. It just speaks to how bad, yeah. how much I would just how, assume how much of a struggle Nailers had. It and does. Like, it does. But I, again, I don't think he's going anywhere though, because for, you know, I you I see. Go ahead. I mean, you can't if you take Bo Naylor away. You can't. You start hedges every day. You only have two catchers. And you can't play David Fry the way you've played him so far. You could start Fry, but you lose that flexibility that he has, which makes him so valuable. And then you're having to play Austin Hedges a little more because you don't have Fry back there. So I think Naylor, in a weird way, Naylor is saved by the roster construction. Um, but I, I just really think he's got to get better at the major league level. I know you said you can face good changeups in AAA. You can. Maybe an approach change or maybe just kind of resetting himself would help. I just don't think they're at that point yet, really. But he does have to get better. Hey, the two hits, ironically, he had against Colorado on on Monday were against lefties. And the one was hit 99 miles an hour, so that was good. Like, you know, I'm just I'm just looking at any kind of silver lining at this point because they do need his bat at some point this year. They're going to yeah, need it's, it. And again, like, I see a lot of outside people who talk very negatively about this Cleveland team or just – you know specifically like some twins fans or stuff to talk about how this team's been very lucky it's like 
no, this is why I'm not afraid about luck. It's why I'm not afraid about regression is like their best hitter in the first month has missed the last month due to injury. They lost Bieber after two starts. The guy who you and I both thought was their third biggest hitter this year has been a train nothing. wreck has been, you know, a, a, a disaster. Um, they've had all of these things that have not, you know, the shortstop situation. They had two interesting prospects and they have no production. They have so many things. Getting not a lot negative. from right field. Yeah. It, you know, Brennan didn't, it, in their, why are they able to be successful? It's been timely hitting, which is, you know, one of those things that, yeah, there is a degree of luck in that, but at the same time, like when you put runners on base, base you put you pressure know, on things the pitchers. Happen. And, you know, they, they are putting more of a charge into the ball this year. Like whether or not everyone's struggling or not, that this is a team that they're going to, I mean, I guess my question is, do you think they will hit more home runs by the end of June than they hit all of last year? If not the end of June, by the end of July, they might like they're on a pace to crush what they did because they were so pitiful a year ago. So yeah, what are they doing? They're hitting for more power. They're walking more. So even though, right, they went from a bottom production team to an upper half and that's their 10th in and homers right now they're 59 yeah they're, they're doing <laughs> a lot of things well and the bullpen has been there and even though the starting pitching i mean logan allen two good starts in a row you know there's some positive signs with this team so i i think anyone who's just like chalking this up is like a hey they've been they're facing te- you know the, people want to talk themselves into circles about why this team can't be successful i think at this point until they show me a reason why they can't be i'm going to bet on them being successful Right. When when is a hot start no longer a hot start? And when is it just when being you get, a really good when team? it's June? Yeah, it's almost June. I mean, there's that old adage that says, you know, you don't look at the standings until Memorial Day. Well, it's Memorial Day and the Guardians are in first place and the Royals have matched them over the last week. Obviously, the Royals have lost two in a row. So the Guardians were lucky enough to gain a game during that nine game stretch, which is incredible. So the Royals, they will have to talk about coming up here soon. Um, but you're looking at. People talk. People look at uh, runs allowed and runs scored as a way to look at sustain, sustainability, and that's the what they call the Pythagorean win loss. Don't ask me what goes into that because I'm not a math major, but it just looks at runs runs scored, runs allowed, and by that they should be 34 and 19, maybe 34 and 20 after after Monday. That doesn't update till tomorrow, but um, 34 and 20 still a pretty good darn record, even if they're not if they're 36 and 18. Like that's still going to be enough to be in contention. So bullpens can hide a lot of bad things. They've hid the rotation for the first part of the year. I think we both think the rotation is going to get better for the most part. They might need to make some external improvements. They're going to get an internal improvement here soon. They're also going to get their leadoff hitter back here soon. We're going to talk about guys who are coming back. We'll talk a little more about that Colorado game, uh, just as how games can go a million different ways. Um, All coming up. Uh, I don't know if you saw this recently. This goes to to our friends at Game Time. I was talking about how I was going to use Game Time to buy Black Keys tickets. Well, they canceled their tour, unfortunately, because they were not getting a whole lot of ticket sales, it sounds like, unfortunately. So I will be keeping my eye on Game Time for Black Keys tickets whenever they do talk about their uh, their next steps for a tour. But the one thing I've been looking at is there's a lot of, if you're into comedy, there's a lot of cool comedians coming to Cleveland this summer to Hilarious. My wife's really big into going to comedy shows. Um, and really, we don't know what our schedule looks like right now for the summer. It's kind of up in the air. We're doing a lot of things this summer. Um, so we don't want to commit to buying these tickets to these comedy shows. So what I said is let's use the Game Time app. If we are in a position where we can go to these comedy shows a day or two before the show, we're just going to buy our tickets on Game Time because they have last minute uh, deals on there. You can find tickets where you're sitting um, right up until before the show. And they have the game time credit, which they're going to give you 110% of the difference. If you find the same ticket for less in the same row or section, um, they have a good customer service policy as well. They just take the guesswork out of buying tickets of all kinds, including MLB tickets. So download the game time app and create an account and use code locked on MLB for $20 off your first purchase terms do apply. Again, create the account and redeem our code locked on MLB. That's L O C K E D O N M L B for $20 off your first purchase on a game time. Download game time today. Last minute tickets, lowest prices guaranteed. 2007 World Series should have been Cleveland and the Rockies. That game is going to, game two of that series is going to be at 840 on Tuesday. Just search your Guardian, just search for Guardians on your Sirius XM app. 
that Rockies game, just talking about the winning streak, about how, you know, things can change so quickly in a game. You know, they should have, I agree, they should have pulled Curry but way before Blackman. I, the very last batter they should have faced was the nine hitter in that game, right? Like that's okay. at the very least probably, probably should have been before, but he should not have faced Blackman in the fourth inning. And if you do that, and you know, maybe Nick Salem comes in and gives up a home run. Maybe he doesn't. I think he's hard to elevate against given his ground ball tendencies, but that's a ballpark where you want a ground ball pitcher too, especially that, in that, that situation, the bases are, or it was two on and, and one out. You wanted that double play and the Jimenez thing. Like in theory, you should be out of that inning, but it looks like they were talking on the broadcast about how the umpire at second base, the way he was positioned might have shielded a view of the ball from Jimenez accidentally. And Jimenez kind of caught a glimpse of the ball late and it ate him up. And I, I would say nine times out of 10, Jimenez makes that play. I mean, he's not, he's a, a platinum glover for a reason. So either Curry gets out of the inning with a double play there. If, if Jimenez makes that play, it would have been a hard play maybe, but, um, or the umpire's position dif- position differently, or Jimenez just makes a great play like he always does. Still, after that, pro- I would have probably brought in a reliever after that. I know some people are going to say you can't bring a reliever in the fourth inning with the way this bullpen has been taxed, but this team is off on Thursday. Ben Lively went seven innings on Monday, on Sunday, so your bullpen was relatively rested. I know there were a few hiccups on Sunday late in the game in terms of the bullpen, Henches still getting, you know, back into things and whatever, but you could have gone to the bullpen, you know, Curry, you know, at the first sign of struggles. And I understand not, you know, you're not trying, you're not playing to extend a winning streak. You're playing just to win the game that day. And sometimes you have to consider the, the, the war and not just the battle, you know, but I don't know. Like you got, you got this Thursday off, right? You got next Thursday off. You got the Monday yeah. after that off. You got all the Mondays off in June. Like this team has yeah. some off days coming up. You can be, I understand wanting to be careful of the bullpen because they've been overused, but Lively just went seven the day before, and you do have an off day Thursday. You could have been yeah. a little more aggressive there, I think. And here's the thing. They, all we're asking them to to have maybe done is do what they actually did, which was in that situation, maybe you go to Sandlin. If he gets you through, then you bring in Avila and see what he can do. And he actually pitched well today. I mean, he saved the pen. Like, mm-hmm. you know, it was probably his best outing. And he had not thrown since. I was pulling that up right now. What the, the so he threw on Friday and before that he threw on the 18th. So it's like he's had two two outings in in the last week, plus or in the last yeah. nine days. Um, he's serving yeah, the career he, role this year. Yeah, yeah, no, he is. So it's like the thing is, it's just making that call a little earlier because you know what? I, and they ended up having to get the same number of outs. They burned the pen anyways. Like earlier or later, all it led to was more guys on base. Mm-hmm. And it meant that you had to then turn over the top of the lineup more because the bottom of the lineup is what did start to do the damage here. So going out and making that call or not making that call, you burned your pen the same amount. Um, so go get Sandlin set up. And yeah, you know, it happens. There's going to be no perfect game, but uh, no perfect season, I should say. But it, it's a situation that was the thing that drove me nuts is a lot of people are like, hey, it, it's a marathon, not a sprint. I'm like, marathon or sprint, it's still the same situation. They still had to use the same number of the mm-hmm. bullpen to get the same number of outs. It, it doesn't change. Like, leaving Curry in there put you in that, and it was very clear he didn't have the command there. He was not able to put guys away. He was missing in the zone. He had lost it. That doesn't come back in the same inning. We don't see a guy like him who loses a get it back. Get it back. So, yeah, you, you go out and you you make that call because no matter what, you're going to have to. Yeah, if Salem gets out of that, you don't give up as many runs. He gets the same amount of outs. And if you don't want to bring Salem back out for that next inning, you just put Avila in there considering the score or whatever and just try to or just try to use him to get to the back end of your bullpen, which, you know, Barlow is very shaky. Um, That's the third time in a row for him. He seems to have these stints where he'll go two or three games looking, look, not not look good. And then he'll have like 10 in a row where he looks great. So that's the Brian. That's the Brian Shaw thing. Um, So I cover I was at uh, Lake County on Saturday. I saw Quan. During his rehab, look good. He didn't seem very concerned about the, the hamstring at all. He's going to play six to eight innings on Tuesday for Columbus. I would imagine he'll be back with this team by the homestand coming up on Friday. I think he'll probably play one or two or two games in Columbus. I'd be surprised if he wasn't, in, barring setbacks, I'd be surprised if he wasn't back with this team uh, this upcoming homestand. He said that he knew immediately after that, after he recovered, 
uh, from the initial strain. This wasn't one of the bad ones that he's faced in the past. He looked good. Um, super down to earth guy, by the way. It was a it was a fun time talking to him. He probably talked to reporters there for like 15 minutes. It was fantastic. Also gave a ringing endorsement of Travis Pizana, by the way, that that uh, interview that really? up on my my Twitter page. Oh, yeah. I asked him. I said, since you went to Oregon State, I had to ask whether or not he was going to make a pitch for Bazan. And he just talked about all the good things about playing in that, that uh, or playing for Oregon state, the pipeline and um, it's playing for something bigger than himself because of his country and um, playing in that area in general, where offense is suppressed a lot. So we'll get into that more this, this coming week. So yeah, I would think Juan is coming back. Go check that out on, on Justin's Twitter profile. Yeah, that was, it was a fun one. He gave, yeah, he definitely knew. I was a little nervous. He was going to be like, I don't know who Travis Bazan is. I'm not watching, but he's he very aware of who Travis. Yeah, he goes back. Yeah, he's very aware who Travis Bazan was. And he said, yeah, I, that guy's, that guy's a, t- a guy that's going to help you win games. So, uh, not that, you know, and he, and he was, he was, uh, you know, democratic in the point in, in the phrase that he said, you know, there's a lot of guys who are going to be good for that spot, but uh, he's obviously biased towards, um, Travis Bazan. It was, it was really cool to hear him talk about that, though, and just give him that endorsement. And then Gavin Williams is going to pitch for the Clippers on Wednesday. I'm assuming he's going to need maybe four starts, maybe if you're lucky, three, depending on where his pitch count is at right now. Um, but, you know, you could get um, Gavin Williams back at some time in the month of June, and you're going to get Stephen Kwan back as June starts as well. So this team's getting healthier. They definitely, definitely need Gavin Williams going forward and imagine what you can do with this offense with Stephen Kwan, considering what they just did in this nine game winning streak. I'm very curious to see what they'll do to make room for Stephen Kwan when he comes back, because I thought it was interesting that Estevan Florial did not start in left field in this game on, on Monday, considering the Rockies uh, size of their outfield and not facing a lefty to start. But uh, I don't know. That seems like the way it will go, but we'll find out later in the week. Uh, NCAA tournament is set for baseball coming up this week. We'll talk about that. I've got a, a point I want to make about the, uh, the NCAA tournament and conference tournaments as well. So uh, we'll probably get into some more college and minor league stuff on Tuesday show or Wednesday show, as well as maybe the Guardians game from, from Tuesday as well. And with that said, we want to thank you all for joining us, rating and reviewing, downloading. We made the top 25 uh, baseball prod podcasts yeah, on thanks, guys. this week so thank you all for being a part of that thank you to all of our everydayers um like john and david cheeks malone, and cheeks shout malone. Out cheeks malone. saw him at the captain's game on saturday can't tell me said cheeks malone every day or appreciate you cheeks but uh thank you all who are doing your part uh again thank you and uh tell me if you like this or not go go guardians go